Hi, this is Mike Talbot. I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you how we can use the Unity Serializer to add serialization to a, an existing project. I thought we'd use Angry Bots. So over here, I've got Angry Bots uh, up and loaded. It's a default vanilla version of it right now. The only thing I've got added into this project but the standard stuff is the 3D mouse software from Feldev, so I can go and spin this around using my Space Navigator. Right, so uh, what we need to do then is let's go back to that web page and we'll just download version 0 0.4 of the, uh, of the package and we'll import that into our game. Okay, so we've added that in, so what you'll see extra is you'll see a, a, in the plugins folder here, you'll have uh, the serialization bit and some of the helper functions that go along with it. So that's been added to the game. So now what we need to do is we need to go and work on the actual objects in the game to make them serializable. So first of all, uh, the first thing we have to do is we need to add a save game manager to something that's fixed in the scene, but something that will be loaded with every scene, so it shouldn't be a destroy and load. So I'm going to go to the component menu and choose storage, save game manager, and add one of those. Here it is. Now what this does is it records all of the objects that are going to have their information stored in the scene. Uh, and it holds on to that and so that it can find them when it reloads it to see if they've moved or been destroyed or whatever. The next thing we're going to do is add on uh, the test serialization script to that camera. That will give us uh, a very basic UI for saving and loading. So we'll do that and I'm just going to save it. Right, so next off, let's look at what's actually going on and what we want to save. So the first thing we probably want to save is the player. And if we look at player, there's actually quite a few things on player. So we're definitely going to want to save player itself. So we'll go to the storage menu and add a store information on player. And then actually we probably want to store information on all of these other parts here. So we'll just go and add store information to all of those too. Um, that should probably be enough, I think. Right, so that's a player stored. Now we need to think about uh, the enemies next, I think. So let's go and have a look at the enemies. Well, we've clearly got enemy spiders, uh, enemy mechs, and uh, these simple buzzers and for this example we'll just enable those things. So let's look at enemy spider first. Uh, obviously built off a prefab which is going to help us out a lot. So we're going to store enemy spider for sure. Now we don't need to make this a prefab identifier because they all already exist in the scene. We'd be adding prefab identifiers if it were things that were being dynamically generated. Uh, such as bullets or whatever, but we'll leave that alone uh, for the current example. Now, we're going to need to store information on all of these things in here, I think. So, we'll just go and add uh, store information to all of those children. And actually, I know that several of these components refer to bits on the actual MindBot itself, so they actually have references to components. This MindBot head is used to the flashing head animation. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take all of those and we're just going to give them a unique identifier. So that will allow it to go and find it later on. So that is Enemy Spider pretty much configured, so we'll go and apply that to the prefab. So hopefully now all of these uh, have those components on them. Yeah. And we'll save the project and save the scene. Okay, let's do something with uh, the whole area. They, they exist inside this enemy's area, so we should probably go and tag that in some way. Let's give it a unique identifier. 
And uh, these simple buzzers contain the kamikaze buzzers. We'll probably want to tell all of those that we know where they are. So we'll go and give those a unique identifier. And then let's have a look at these kamikaze buzzers. Again, these are prefabs, which is going to help us out. So we'll store the kamikaze buzzer and then we'll go into it and actually we'll do the same thing in here. We'll say all of those things in there need a unique identifier on them. That should be enough. Um, okay, right, so that's the buzzer done. We'll apply that to get it onto all of the uh, prefabs and we'll save the scene and save the project. Okay, having done that, um, I haven't done the mechs yet, so let's quickly go and just do the mechs as well. We'll store them, we'll store all of their child items, and let's go and just make sure the whole of the mech has a unique identifier on it. Great, so that's that. We'll apply that. I'm going to save the scene, save the project. Okay, that'll do for now, I think. So we save the player. One more thing we'd probably quite like to do, and uh, we'll just do it on this airlock door here. So let's go and find that airlock door. What are you? Click on the right thing that would help. Door. Right, finally, flare sliding door, main exterior door, and then we've got stuff to do with that. So that looks like the thing that's got the animation on it. So we probably want to go and uh, store information on all of these things. So we've got an exterior door, no, that should be fine. So we'll just highlight those and add store information script to that. Go back to the sliding door, apply that to the prefab so it goes into everything else, save the scene, and save the project. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to run the game, and actually what that's going to do is capture all of those things we've now flagged which are part of the core scene, and it's going to store them, little references to them, in our save game manager script over here so currently if we look at reference yeah, we've added all of them already there they are 788 of them so we'll just run it and stop it and then hopefully that will now have the right values in it so we'll just go and save the scene Right, uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the sound effects, I think. Let's have the volume down to 0.01. Right. Hopefully that will make it possible to hear me speaking whilst we uh, get on with it. Right, so uh, next up, run the game and let's try some saving and loading, see what we need to fix. So here is the game. Oh. Let's just clear off any previously stored information that I obviously had left over from, from uh, the working version I did of this to make sure this was going to be okay. Just clean up, that will remove all the stuff, and then we'll start again. Okay, so no saved games, running around. Uh, let's go uh, through this door maybe. Let's save the game there. Bit annoying that I have to fire to save the game, but you know, needs must. Um, let's shoot him. Save the game. Uh, went around and act. 
activate this slider mech over here. Save the game before it kills me. Okay, right. So, now we can just go back and load some of these games. So let's load that first one. There we were outside the door. Uh, let's load the second one. Here we are inside the room before I activated the spider mech, spider enemy. And here we are having activated it. Now, the one thing we can see there is once it's loaded and saved fine, that spider wasn't animating. So we're going to need to go and look at the code for that spider animation and see why it might not be animating after we reload it. And we'll go from there. Okay, so let's stop the game. What we're going to do is go to the code for spider animation. So let's find that spider animation and take a look. Okay, so because I've prepared one earlier, I've seen this already, I know what's happening here, and that's the fact that when you disable that spider, it crossfades the animation. Now that crossfade is going to happen after the load is completed, so if it ever gets a disable, it's going to turn off these animations afterwards. So actually what we want to say is, we don't really want to allow it to disable, or enable, probably, or we'll certainly say disable, whilst it's actually loading the game. It's fine any other time, because if we're loading the game we're going to set whether it's enabled or disabled ourselves after that. So to do that we're just going to type in if level serializer dot is deserializing. And we're going to return. And we'll save that. Okay, so if we now go back to Unity, run it. And we'll now load back that, that position we had. And as you can see, Spider Mac is now happily running around. He's also vanishing, uh, which isn't exactly what we're after. And that's probably because we're not saving quite enough information about the actual spider, because we're saving a load of scripts. We haven't really looked at those scripts. We probably actually want to save more variables than we are on something like the AI attack or something like that. So let's have a look at spider AI. Move controller, maybe that's what I'm looking for. So, yeah, it looks like there's a bunch of things here that might be kind of interesting to save, like this in range and uh, a bunch of other stuff to do with the proximity and the last blink time and whatever. So, in order to do that, we're just going to save all those private variables as well. Uh, we'll import the serialization namespace and we'll just add a script attribute. We'll serialize all. And that should do it for that. Uh, we'll do it to the return move controller as well, maybe. And that actually doesn't look like that's got too much going on. Okay, um, let's have a look at the attack move controller over here. Does that have anything interesting in it? That next patrol point might be worth saving. We'll do the same to that. Import serialization. And add a script variable of serialize. Okay, so now we'll probably want to just clear down all of the currently saved data because we're going to save new stuff. So we'll just do storage, clean up maintenance, and then we'll run the game. So let's run around over here. Let's get ourselves in some real trouble.
and so on and so forth. So now, just try loading it back. Looks like we're in suitable trouble at that point. Looks like we're still killing things. They're not vanishing, strangely. Load that last point in. And there you go. Angry Box has some saving and loading.